In this lecture we want to look at the graphic attributes of our objects. At the moment we've created three squares, but they're all white with a thin black line around them. We're going to use this palette here, the Attributes palette. If the palette is not already open, go to Window in the menu bar, choose Palettes, and make sure that Attributes has a tick. Select the first rectangle. And you might notice I'm using my Selection tool for this. That's the upward pointing arrow on the basic tool set. Once you've selected your object, you can then choose the graphic attributes for that object. So for example, we could choose none. We could choose solid. We could choose a hatch or a pattern. And you'll notice that after you've made your choice, you might get further choices about that fill style under here. So I could choose a gray color, for example. I can choose any one of these colors. Classic colors standard colors, and I also have access to the Color Palette Manager. That's this button here. I can add additional color palettes, or I can take them away. So I can add the Pittsburgh paint colors, and I can take away the resin paint colors. There's a large number of palettes that you can add, so just choose the ones that you want. Click OK. So once you've selected your style, you can then choose what color or what pattern. We can also choose the line weight, so we can apply a thick line weight to that if we want. We could add a drop shadow. There's my drop shadow there. It's coming up, which looks to me just slightly odd, so I'm just going to turn that round. You can also use the preview button to preview your changes. Click OK. Now let's select the next object. This time we want to use a hatch. Back to the Attributes palette and we'll choose Hatch. And it chooses a default hatch. If we click on our choices here and then go to our Vectorworks Libraries, Defaults, and choose our default hatches, you'll see I've got a large number of hatches that I could use. You can choose a hatch and then click on the select button and that will apply that hatch to that object. You will also notice that these hatches appear in the resource manager. So I can drag a hatch, so click and hold your mouse button down, drag that hatch, drop it onto an object, you notice it turns red, let go, and that's another way to apply graphic attributes to objects. Select the next rectangle and this time we'll add a gradient. And the gradient works in a similar way. We choose gradient, then we have choices about the gradient. We have the ability to go to our defaults, choose our gradients, and choose any one of these default gradients that's there. Click on the select button and that will apply that gradient. If we look at our resource manager and we look at gradients, you'll see that I can drag a gradient from the resource browser. So click and hold your mouse button down, drag it out, let go when you get near an object. I'm going to turn off my drop shadow. Hatches and gradients often have further choices. This gradient, for example, has extra settings here with this button, and I can choose that to be a linear or a radial or an angular type gradient. Let's start with radial and then OK. And you can see it starts there in the center and then it radiates out. If you want to control that gradient in a more complete way, then use your attribute mapping tool. The attribute mapping tool allows you to choose the end where it starts and where it stops. So you can choose how that gradient looks. 